has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. All right. Let us all be ready our hearts. We're ready to welcome you to this service this day. Just stand if you want to, clap if you want to. We're ready for you. Your said he saw him oh, yes. as a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Oh, yes. John talked about him oh, yes. in the book of the seven seals. Oh, yes. Some call him Rose and Cheryl. Oh, yes. Some call him the Prince of Peace. Oh, yes. But I call Jesus my rock. Ezekiel said he saw him oh, yes. as a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Oh, yes. Talked about him oh, yes. in the book of the seven seals. Oh, yes. Some called him the Rose of Sharon, oh, yes. others called him the Prince of Peace. Oh, yes. But I call Jesus my rock. Oh, Jesus my rock. Oh, Jesus my rock. Jesus my rock. Sweet Jesus. Talking about Jesus, call him Jesus, oh Jesus, sweet Jesus, oh I know he won't be me, always won't be me, I call Jesus my rock. I call him Jesus, Rose of Sharon, we'll call him Jesus, he's the true father. Lily of the valley, bright and morning star. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
Jesus. My rock. For the sun, for the morning, for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. It's a good day to be in the yeah. house of the Amen. Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. Because if where else where I would want to be. Psalms 100. It says, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Yeah. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful saints. Knowing that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people. Mm -hmm. The sheep of his pasture. Enter the gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Giving thanks to him mm -hmm. and praising his name. For the Lord is good. Yes. And his love endures forever. Amen. His faithful continue through all generations. Let's bow in prayer. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come before you, to be in your midst, knowing that you are God, and we know that we can come to you no matter what the situation is, that you're always there and you're always on time. We give you the praise and give you the glory and always give you the honor, but you know what we are going through, what we're dealing with. Thank you for this church open up in your name we ask your father be with the pastor of this church as he bring forth your word that we can hear from you knowing that you giving us what we need to hear father for these things i ask in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen let's stand
I know this is unbecoming of me, <laughs> but here I am. But I wanted to model this hat because we want to give thanks to those of you who participated in the hat making derby project on Wednesday. And this is a part of that creation. Amen. We had a bunch of people to. Amen. This hat was made for me by the director, Miss Tiffany Ellis, who's the director of Gen Care, who sponsored everything, all the materials for making this hat. But I will tip my hat to you, but I will take it off. <laughs> But there will be some other exciting things to happen for Mother's Day as well as Father's Day. And watch your bulletin because we're coming at you. And I'm also excited also today because some of you have been asking, when are we going to have Vacation Bible School again? I'm glad you asked because we are going to have Vacation Bible School this year. Amen. And it's tentatively scheduled for June the 24th through the 28th. Our theme will be, I got this with Jesus in Philippians 4.13. But aside from that exciting announcement, we have a new director today that will be directing our vacation Bible school. And that is in the presence of Mr. Mark Johnson, if you would stand Amen. up. Amen. Mr. Mark Johnson, along with Reverend Williams and Sister Billy King, will be directing our Vacation Bible School. Next week, there will be sign-up sheets because we're going to need everybody, everybody to make this Vacation Bible School okay. successful. Mm -hmm. So get ready to sign up in the back because I'm coming at you. The other thing, men of Zion, we had a rehearsal yesterday, and it was a great one. Yeah. But it could have been greater if all you men were here to help us. Mm -hmm. And we were asking all men of Zion, Tim Brown back there? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And I don't know where Brother Bobby jo uh, Young is. He has slipped out. But all those guys that are singers, especially those that sing in the shower, mm. come on out this coming Saturday from 12 to 1.30. If you would come, I promise you, we will get out on time. Right, musicians? Amen. Okay. Mm. If you will come and give us that one hour and a half so that we can present the music sometime this year. <laughs> so, men of Zion, we're looking for you. If you can't carry your tune, we will have some bags up here for you to carry your tunes in. <laughs> so, come on out, men. I'll see you on Saturday. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Take up on Mr. Grizz offering. We need you. We all need you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now it's that time. It's time to show our love for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with your tithes and offerings. As our ushers come on down, collect your offerings, please.
praying for all things. All things. All of us, thank you so mighty God. Thank you for being here with us. Be this day, let this day be a great day. God bless us. God be with us. Amen. 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 You may be seated. What a great day it is to be able to praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Wherever you are, if you want to come to the altar, please come. Let's prepare to pray. All those who want to come to the altar. Our Heavenly Father, we come today with humble hearts and with thanksgiving. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you do for us. Help us to be humble. Help us to never forget you. Bless us today and help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us. May we forever be able to be thankful and to worship you, to serve you. Now we ask you to bless this service. God, Pastor Joyner, that he may deliver the word in the manner in which you want him to. Then help and touch the hearts and minds of anyone who is unsaved, that they may come to know you and accept you. We thank you, Father, for all that you do. We thank you for helping us to try to do better than we do. Help us to be humble. Help us to try to strive to do your will. Now, Father, as we go throughout the day, help us to lift you up. Help us to love one another. Help us to do the things that are pleasing in your sight. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for us. Now we ask these in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For your goodness, for your mercy, for your kindness, we offer praise. Uh, would you help me offer praise this morning under our God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know he's been good. Brem, how you know he's been good? Because I didn't hear about you on news last night. Yes, sir. Big event in our city. Thunder over Louisville. Thousands of people down on the waterfront. Beautiful, beautiful day. But yet, the adversary had to show up. A young person was shot last night. Amidst all the joy and Happiness, the adversary had to show up and try to spoil things. Reverend, are you going to thunder? My response was, no, I'm too old. I can't run like I used to. I'm from the old school. I, Brother Little John, I, I believe I'm the man in my relationship with my wife. So if anything popped off, I knew I had to protect her. Yes, sir. I had to be a covering for her. Yes, sir. So I decided to cover her at home. where I knew I didn't have to run. God grants us common sense. Amen? Yes, it's a sad thing where we have events that are designed to bring us happiness and bring us joy. But yet, the adversary shows up. Hearing about the incident last night, my mind went back to when one of our own was down at the Pegasus Parade, enjoying the Pegasus Parade because of foolishness. He ended up getting shot mistakenly. But praise God, it wasn't life-threatening and She's still with us today. Amen. There was an old commercial years ago with, about insurance. <laughs> Is that me, Skip? Okay. About insurance. And that old commercial said, be wise, be insured. Changed. Said, be wise, stay at home. <laughs> Amen. 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 So you're that can't be me. I ain't touching it now. Go with these. Okay. All right. Testing one, two, three. Okay, we're gonna go with that. Thank you, Amen. Disconnect this so if I move, I don't drag it off with me. 
Well, my brothers and sisters, as I thought about all that was happening, I had a question for you. And I wonder, I wonder, have you ever seriously considered why you joined church? Have you ever just sat back and ask yourself the question, why did I join church? Did you come to God as a result of an appeal some pastor made promising you that God would show up and show out? in your life? Was that why you joined? Was it because of what you thought God could and would do for you? Was it because the pastor promised you that God would give you peace of mind or physical and emotional healing our power to overcome life difficulties? Or maybe you came because you felt God would ensure your success in daily life. Whatever the case, you came. And you joined because you felt God would reward your coming. If that's the case, don't, don't be alarmed. You're not alone. You see, many people join for those same reasons. And with the appeals that come across pulpits today, many do come because of what they feel God can and will do for them. They come looking for something. They come expecting something. They come expecting to be remunerated for their time and their energy. They expect something from God. However, I just stopped by to tell us this morning that we must remember that our Lord Jesus said, the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. In other words, Jesus says, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve. Do I have a witness? Additionally, he said, he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. That scripture used to trouble me. And then it came to me, what Christ is saying there is, you got to put aside your own desires. You got to put aside your own wants. You have to put aside your expectations. Give up all of that and render service unto him. And if you do that, that's when you'll find your life. That's when you'll find joy. That's when you'll find purpose. So the question is, are we seeking merely the rewards of religion? Or do we want the opportunities of service? It's my prayer that after studying the example of Hobab today, found in the book of Numbers, the 10th chapter, the 29th through the 32nd verses, we will understand the real reason we should come to the Lord and join the church. Please stand with me now as we turn to the book of Numbers, the 10th chapter, the 29th through the 32nd verse, wherein we find these words. It reads, then Moses said to Hobab, the son of Reuel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out to the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us and we will do you good. For the Lord has promised good concerning Israel. But he, 
meaning Hobab, said to him, I will not come, but rather will go to my own land and relatives. Then he, Moses said, please do not leave us inasmuch as you know where we should camp in the wilderness and you will be as eyes for us. So it will be if you go with us that whatever good the Lord does for us, we will do for you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. From this text, I, I want to speak very briefly on the subject of reward our service. Which do you desire? Reward our service. Which do you desire? With my underlying premise, my central theme, my main point being this. Saints, it's not what we gain, but what we give that measures the worth of the life we live. We should stop looking for rewards and begin looking for opportunities of service, for that's the pathway to real life. Oh, I don't think you heard me. It's not what we gain, what we receive, but it's what we give yes. that measures the worth of our lives. So we need to quit looking for rewards but instead look for opportunities of service. Yes. Amen? In our scriptural reference this morning, we find the story of Hobab, the Midianite. Hobab was Moses' brother-in-law. Ragul, a rule, also named Jethro, was Moses' father-in-law. And, of course, he married a Midianite woman. And Hobab was her brother. And after Moses had led the children of Israel through the Red Sea, he said to Hobab, Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. Hobab replied, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and my own kindred. Then Moses made a second appeal. He said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knoweth how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. In other words, Moses told Hobab, Hobab, you know the desert. You know the places we can find water. You know the places we can find shade. You know the places we can find rest for our souls. You can be our eyes and you can guide us in the right direction. You can be of service to us, brother. And Hobab responded yes to that plea and in fact did stay with Moses. Now don't miss this. Don't, don't miss this. Don't miss it. When Moses asked Hobab to stay with them, promising him a reward, promising him that we will do thee good, Hobab refused. But when Moses asked him, pointing out that he could be of service, Hobab accepted. He refused the reward, but accepted the service. Which do you desire? Reward or service? You see, church, when Moses asked his brother-in-law, Hobab, to go with them to the promised land because of what he could get out of it, Hobab refused. But when Moses pointed out that Hobab knew the wilderness and could serve the people as a guide, serve as their eyes, then he accepted and stayed with them. He refused when rewards were offered him, but he accepted when given the opportunity of service. My brothers and sisters, service should always outweigh reward. Do I have a witness? You know, my brothers and sisters, today, too many people become disappointed in the church for the same reason. They join the church thinking of what they can get out 
of the church, thinking that they will be rewarded. You know, I think of sometimes people who have come to me and said, Reverend, I'm, I'm called to preach. And I say, well, why do you feel you're called to preach? They say, well, because I got a word for the people. I want to stand before the people. I want the accolades of the people. I want the awe and respect of the people. And to those, I say, my brother or my sister, you're in it for the wrong reason. I think about speaking to people who come to me and say, I want to be a deacon. Well, why do you want to be a deacon? I want to be a deacon so I can sit down front. So I can stand up before the people and I can lead in prayers. I believe I can moan a little bit, Reverend, so I think I'd be a good prayer leader. Well, no, my brother, you're looking at it from the wrong perspective. For it's not about being lifted up. It's about serving and service. Oh, my brothers and sisters, You must come to church thinking of what you can give the church. Things like your time. Things like your service. Things like your money. And yes, things like your prayers. And as you think of what you can do for the church rather than what the church can do for you, you learn something of its purpose. The real joy of the Christian life is the service we give rather than the rewards we receive. Do I have a witness? Amen. I believe it was John Kennedy who said, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. When Jesus called his disciples, he didn't promise them social success. He didn't promise them peace of mind, a magical power by which they could attain all the desires of their hearts? No. 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 He said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. He also said to those he called, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. My brothers and sisters, he called them to service and not reward. Yes. Well, what are you saying, preacher? I'm simply saying that they would be called upon to fish in inclement weather. They would be called upon to roll their boats into stormy waters when the winds were against them. The first disciples of Christ were not bargain hunters looking for a cheap and easy way of life. They were men who were caught up by such a great and thrilling enterprise that they were willing to forget all about themselves and think about the service they could render to others. They got joy and fulfillment out of serving others and that's why we should come to church. That's why we should join the church. Because we have a desire, a burden, a passion for serving others. Do you not know, saints, that just to maintain our own self-respect, we must follow the principle of service rather than selfishness? Life must be measured not by what we get, but by what we give. Actually, our own self-preservation demands the approach of service. And Jesus enunciated this principle again and again. Remember the story of the talents where a landowner was going away and he gave his servants talents to manage while he was away? Remember that story? Yes, sir. He gave one, five. To another, he gave two. And to a third, he gave one. And then he took off. To the one he gave five, he invested wisely and he made five more. Yes. To the one he gave two, he invested wisely and he gained two more. But to the one he gave only one talent. That 
rascal hid that talent in the ground for fear of losing it. To the ones who served and did something with their talents and got a good return on their investment, he said in verse 21, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Yes, so you see, my brothers and sisters, when you serve, yes. when you're a blessing to someone else, when your focus is on ministering to someone else, you will receive a blessing from the Lord. But let's take a look at the other. The word spoken to the one man in the story who hid his talent, who didn't serve, who didn't do anything with it. Thou wicked and slothful servant, take therefore the talent from him. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, you might ask the question, wait a minute now, well. What had the wicked and slothful man done to deserve such a harsh treatment? He hadn't killed anybody. He didn't commit adultery. He didn't steal from anybody. Oh, he didn't blaspheme against God. He hadn't been dishonest. He told the landowner the truth. You are a harsh man and I was afraid. So I hid it. My brothers and sisters, the Bible is very clear as to the fatality of uselessness. The person who does not serve God and humanity is useless and will eventually lose his or her soul. He or she will become dead inside. No person really finds life until they find something bigger than themselves to which to give themselves. And as I stated in my opening statement, it's not what we gain, but what we give that measures the worth of the life we live. Yes. Do I have a witness? Do you not know, saints, that many people have lost their vitality, their nerves are on edge, and they feel tired. They think they need to relax and rest. But such is rarely the case. Quiet as is kept, most often such people aren't really tired. They're simply bored. However, if the truth be known, they find new strength and inner control through forgetting themselves and working in some larger enterprise. They find that most of their tiredness will be overcome by getting to work at something worthwhile by serving others rather than serving themselves. I also find it interesting when I hear someone say, I must slow down. I'm working too hard. Do you know what? I have yet to find one person who worked himself to death. Conversely, what I have discovered is that the most dangerous time in life is when we quit work yes, and have nothing to do. That is when people begin to disintegrate. Yes. What are you saying, preacher? All I'm trying to say is that we must stop looking for rewards and begin looking for opportunities of service. When we're busy serving God by serving others, that's when we feel energized and full of joy. But service is the pathway to real life. How do you know that, Reverend? Well, I think back about so many years ago when my father retired. I bought the house next door to him to make sure that I could be there to minister to him and to help him in anything that he needed. And I noticed my father had worked for LG&E for some 36 years, and he retired. I noticed all he wanted to do was sit in his recliner and watch TV. I'd go over, I'd say, Dad, picking up a little weight now. All you're doing is sitting and eating and watching TV. Come on, walk down the block with me. Let's get some exercise. 
My daddy looked at me and said, boy, I've been exercising for 36 years at LG and E. If I want to sit here and watch TV all day, I'm going to sit here and watch TV. You go on and walk by yourself. And slowly but surely, I watched his physical health disintegrate, deteriorate. My brothers and sisters, we can't just sit still. Well, you heard Brother Joe Greer make an announcement earlier about the need for vacation Bible school workers on the week of June 24th. That's an area where if you aren't currently serving, you can serve in vacation Bible school. Also, as we look towards the future, I told you the year of 2024 was the year of restoration and resurrection. We're going to resurrect and restore many of our ministries. So we're looking for the need of a, a coordinator of youth ministries and, and a youth director. That's an area where you can serve. What about the need for Sunday school teachers? We're about ready to launch, go back to having separate classes for all of our members. We need Sunday school teachers. You heard Joe talk about and make a special appeal to the men of the church so that we can strengthen our men's choir and men stand proudly and sing praises unto God. We also have a recommendation to find a leader for our coffee house book club ministry. That's a whole new ministry that we're considering offering here, but we need individuals to come forward and be willing to serve in the capacity of selecting books and choosing books and leading conversations and things of that nature. We also need a community action coordinator that will interface with Humana and Centerwell as we launch various ministries for this entire community right here in Zion Baptist Church. My brothers and sisters, service opportunities are available. The question is, reward or service? Which do you desire? I can promise you, my brothers and sisters, no matter how you feel, if you get involved in the work of the Lord, no matter how many hours you've put in through the week on your secular job, when you get involved in the work of the Lord and you start seeing people's lives change, you start seeing young people come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You start seeing young people sing in the choir. You start seeing young people serve others. Then that is such a reward that God opens up the windows of heaven and fills your heart to the extent to where your heart can't even contain the blessings he pours out for you. You get joy out of serve. Quit looking for reward. Let your gifts speak for you in utilizing those gifts to serve the church of the true and living God. So as the voices of Zion come forward to render us a hymn of invitation, I'm inviting you to stand with me now as we open up the doors of this local congregation and as we extend the invitation for Christian discipleship. If you've never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've never fully given your life to him, we invite you to do so today. If you know Jesus Christ and realize that you haven't been utilizing the talent that he has given you to serve others in this church, and you want to recommit your life to Christ and use those talents to bless others, we invite you to come. Come by Christian experience or by letter or by water baptism. Just come and give your hands to one of our spiritual counselors and let them pray with you and for you. Please come today and remember, it's not what we gain, but what we give that measures the worth of the life we live. We should stop looking for rewards and begin looking for opportunities of service. But that's the pathway to real life. Come and experience real life today as the choir leads us a hymn of invitation. Is there one today? Is there one today? Is there one today? Is there one today? Is there 
than one today. There's nothing better. There's nothing better. Knowing Jesus. Than knowing and serving Jesus. Just come get to know him. You want to know him. Get to know him. Get to know him. Is there one today? Right now, today, let's come. Come on, come on. Is there one today? Come on. Please come. Let the church of the true and living God say, Amen. 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 Well, last week I, I finished up early and received some texts and comments and said, Reverend, I didn't know you were going to preach a sermon, a sermonette. <laughs> and this week I'm even shorter. It just... 12.02. Amen. One hour. One hour of service, and y'all getting ready to get out of here. Hour of power. Hour of power. So I'm looking at your faces, I guess, Brother Audrey, that means next week I'm going to have to preach an hour and a half. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Amen. Well, before my lovely wife and Sister Carol accused me of having a second and third close. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do the benediction. And we're going to get out of here. Is that all right? Amen. Saints of God, only what you do for Christ will last. Thank you, Lord. If you're not experiencing joy in church, let me give you a secret. Get busy. Do something. Yes, Find a way to serve. It's through service that you find joy. Yes, Who knows? As you serve, the Lord may bless you to the extent that folk will think you've gone plumb crazy with joy and happiness for the Lord. Amen. Let us stand for the benediction. Dear God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the presence of your spirit. We thank you for the joy that leapt from breast to breast. And now, Lord, we ask that as we prepare to leave this place, that we will never leave your presence. We pray that you will lead us, guide us, direct us, Encourage us, support us, strengthen us as we undertake the trickery of the adversary. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the redeemed of the Lord all sing together threefold. Amen. God bless you. God keep you as I pray.